Dave here, how are you? Today I'm going to take us through a little bit more from where we were with Aspire, the last episode I did on this CNC journey. Now last time, and I'll switch the screens around now, last time I took you to creating a vector. So let's start again, a brand new one. I'll show you how quick it is. We went through all of this stuff here. The size that we created, the material surface, we're going to Z0 position off the top of the surface. We're working from the left bottom corner on the XY datum. And we were, well, I, this time I put it into looking like MDF. And I can show you what it looks like very quickly. There, I go to the 3D view and it's a bit of MDF. There's other things there as well. Anyway, uh, then we said, okay, now we want to create the vector, which was the slotted hole. So we went over here to create a vector and that was 140 was where I left it. So let's just type in, and I was, this is just using the keyboard, 70.0 and 50 was fine. And the diameter was 30 millimeters and hit create. We zoomed in and then we dragged the whole, panned across the whole thing, I should say, by pushing down on the scroll wheel and bringing it up to where we can see it and a size that we can see. And then last week, I didn't really tell you too much. This part here, this is called toggle geometry snapping on and off. Now, that's very important that that is turned on, not off. And I'll show you why in a second. It's going to create tangents. See how it just immediately goes to that thing. It says, I don't care what you do, Dave. I'm going to give you a tangent there. Or I could give you a tangent there going up the y-axis or coming straight off that point to wherever you want. So we're going to create another circle over here for our slotted hole. So I'm going to say 140 millimeters, 0, and it's on the same, it's 50 millimeters from the baseboard this direction. It will be 50 millimeters from the baseboard this way. It will only have moved over here. Our second circle will be over here somewhere. Let's say create, and there it is. Now I'm going to hit close. And I want to join these two circles via the snap to geometry tool. And I'm going to use the polyline. And I'm not going to worry about any of those things there. I'm just going to come straight to it. And it's snapped already. Drag a line across here and it's going to snap to the tangent there. Last week I showed you I just took it straight down and it's snapping to the tangent there. That's perfectly 90 degrees, by the way. And I'm going to snap to the tangent there. Now I'm going to go over to the close button to shut this and just left click on the close button and that takes me out of that function. Now I've created this vector but it's got all these weird things in here. So if I highlight that, I've got weird vectors everywhere. So I'm going to click on my left mouse button away from it and I'm going to go over to the scissors wherever they are right there, active trim and I'm going to cut that one off and this one off and this one off. Now, if I hadn't selected my snap to geometry tool, there may have been a very, very, very small area here. I'll close this. There may have been a very, very small area here where the tangent hadn't actually touched the circle and I would not have had a complete vector. So now I have by left clicking on my mouse button and dragging to the left, there is my new vector. Now, while I've got that, I can show you quickly how to do a little bit of dimensioning. I click on dimension, add dimensions to a 2D drawing, and I can come over here. And first of all, I have to make sure I'm in a horizontal dimension for this distance here. I'm going to left click on there, drag across to the other side, left click there, and then I'm going to take this anywhere I wish. I can put it inside there if I wish, and left click now. And that's telling me it's 100 millimeters. Now be aware, when you first start a spire up, it's probably going to be in Imperial and it will be 0.2 here, not 10. So if it was 0.2, that would be saying 0.2 of an inch. Now 0.2 of an inch is one fifth of an inch, which is about, is about five millimeters. If you switch over to metric without actually telling uh, and, and come into text, it's going to default. And to be 0.2 of a millimeter. And you will be looking everywhere to see these and you won't see the dimensioning. So you must put that <laughs> in there. It's just one of those little things. So now we're going to do a vertical dimension. I've clicked this and we're going to go from here down to here and we can put the dimension inside or I can put it outside. Let's put it inside this time, 30 millimeters. 
So that's going to tell us that we know our diameter. Our radius, of course, will be half of that. And uh, let's see if we can do arc dimension. It might work. It might work. That arc is 15 millimeter radius. How cool is that? I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to click close now and we're going to say goodbye to these dimensions. And what I've done is I've left click on my mouse button and I'm going to press the delete button on my keyboard. He's gone. Left click and drag onto it and click the delete button again. And same with this guy and all the dimensions are gone. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something called array copy. So we'll drag it down so we can see all of the job. Again, left click on the scroll wheel and move it around to wherever I want. Now, I want four of these on this job and I don't want to have to set it out every time, do a new one, do a new one, because they're not going to be in line. It's just messy and takes too long. So we're going to wake the vector up and we're going to go over here to this where it says offset and layout. The second icon along is array copy. We're going to click that. Now, I've already put in here that it's going to have two rows and two columns. Two columns are the Y, the Y. Two rows are along the X axis, along the X axis. So we want to have an offset or a gap. So if I do a gap, it's going to, I want to do between there to here and between here and to the inside of the other vector. So let's go with 300 on the X as an offset. So it will be measuring from here to the outside. It's the same as center to center and 200 millimeters high is what I've already written. So let's get, do that and click the copy button. And there you go. Now they're not quite centered here, are they? So what we're going to do is we're going to click close. I can, if I want to, center them on my workpiece. So how to do that is we come up to this guy here, transform objects. So we've got all these different things here and I haven't used these yet. I know how to use this fellow though, align selected objects. Remember they're all selected. If I was to click here and click on that, it'd say, well, where are they? I need to know. So we'll close this. I've aligned, I've clicked on one. And it's only woken that one vector up because these aren't grouped yet. So if I left click and drag over the whole lot, they're all woken up. And I'm going to say align. And I'm going to say align to material. Now I could, <clears throat> pardon me, I could align them all left, right. So they'd be in the middle on my Y axis. Or I could say this way, up and down, so they would be equal distance on my x-axis. But I'm going to say, do it to all of them. You watch. There we go. That was pretty quick. And say close. All right, now there's other things I can do. I can create a rectangle that goes right the way around and create that as a tool path or another vector to cut the whole job out if I wanted to just go that way. But this time, I like leaving this here. Let's just concentrate on working on these vectors that we have here. All right, so that's all looking pretty good. And if I was to click on the 3D view, I'd lose sight of all those vectors because we haven't shown, told it to go in any other method yet. We haven't gone over to this side where the toolpaths are. So there we go. Now I'm going to switch back to me. Hopefully, this is just moving it along at a nice, easy pace. It was a bit of a revision on what I'd done the last video. Now I'm going to take it from CAD, which is Computer Aided Design or Computer Aided Drawing, to CAM, which is Computer Aided Machining. Now the difference here is we're going to take it over and whilst we've done the drawings on a flat surface, on looking down from the Z axis, so on the machine looking down onto the bed. That's what we've done so far. It's a two-dimensional drawing. We're now going to tell this machine's tool, and that's a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter end mill that I have in the machine. We're going to tell it where to cut relating, relating to those vectors, whether we're going to cut inside the vector, on the line of the vector, or outside of the vector. 
we're going to tell it which direction to do it and which rotation speed. It is easy. It is easy. You watch and you'll go, oh yeah, wow, that was easy watching Dave do it. It's another thing when you come to do it yourself. You will come along and then your logical progression may not be exactly the same as what I've developed using Aspire. So you need to become, you need to come into tune or you need to be in tune with Aspire and start thinking a little bit the way it works things out. It's, it's logical progression is very good. It's very intuitive. So we'll slip, we'll flick back now and we'll go to switching over from co computer aided drawing over to computer aided machining. That is CAM. Here we go. So we have these vectors and I'm going to drag this up to the middle a little bit better so it's easier to see. Those four vectors, which are my slotted holes. And now I'm going to click on this button here. So it's going to go over to the toolpath commands. So now I have over on this side, on the right hand side of the screen, I have all of this stuff. Now, if I want to, I can quickly check my job setup and it's going to re refresh my memory as to what I have here. All right, <clears throat> so I need to make sure that I ha I'm happy with all of that. I say, okay, now the first thing, I want to cut these out. I'm not going to create a pocket. I'm actually going to cut. So I've clicked on the toolpaths. Uh, which one was it? Well, the one that I just said, 2D profile toolpath. Now my start depth is going to be zero. This cut depth I've put in as 16.1, 16.1 because I want to go 0.1 of a millimeter through this material. Now I've selected a, an end mill, even though it's in Imperial Tools, I'm going to move it down here into my metric tools. <laughs> I hadn't quite fixed that part up. I set this up this morning. Now 6.35 millimeters is the same as one quarter of an inch. So there's our diameter. And even though in the background, this thing is thinking imperial, you don't need to worry about that. If you put in the dimensions here in a metric tool, it will be fine. I've told it how much it can take in one pass, which is five millimeters in any one pass. Now the spindle speed, I'm gonna run it at 18,000 RPM. This machine will do up to 22 or 23,000 RPM. I haven't got a super tiny cutter in it. I think this will be fine at 18,000. The feed rate, I've got it at 50 millimeters a second. Now we can go over here and have a look at how many inches that would be in a minute. Now that's 118 inches in a minute or millimeters in a minute. It's three. Now, you know what? I think I'm a little bit fast. I'm going to take it back to two and a half thousand millimeters a minute. I think that'd be better. And I think that's good. And we'll go back to millimeters a second. That's good. And my plunge rate, five millimeters a second. Let's have a look here at, if we go back to here, millimeters a minute, 3,000 should, 300, I should say, millimeters in a minute should be okay. Yep, I'm good with that. We'll go back to a second. There we go. Now, tool number is tool number one. We say apply and OK. Now that has given me everything up here. Now I want to edit the passes. I want to tell it how deep it goes in each pass. Now being melamine, I only want to cut two millimeters in my first pass. I don't want to be working a whole heap. So let's go to edit passes. And you can see the first pass is four millimeters. Well, I'm going to tell it I want the first pass to be two millimeters and apply. And you can see that's just moved back up. This is representing the full thickness of the board from there to there. That's my 16.1. This is a relative. The second pass, I'm gonna click on the second arrow. I want it to go um, five millimeters more. So five and two is seven. And we apply. And then the next one, is going to be another five millimeters, so seven and five, let's say 12 neat, and apply, point zero, they always like that point zero. 
and then the last one will be 4.1 millimeters in its last cut. The number of passes will be four. Okay. If I had a little bit more faith regarding the capacity of this cutter to go more than five millimeters in one pass, and I'm sure it probably can. Early days, I don't want to stress it. So I'm going to just stick at what I've told it to do. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to have a look at how it's laid out. So we say, okay, let's have a look here. Inside, outside, or on. So if I was to click on, it would run on the line. That vector, it would cover either side. It would be just over three millimeters either side. If I was to go outside it, it would go around it, but I want it to be inside. I'm cutting this. This is the outside of my vector that I want to leave on the board. I'm going to get rid of this in the middle. That'll be my waste. Now we're going to go direction, which is conventional, and it is going to go like so. It's going to turn clockwise as it's going around the job in a clockwise direction. What I do want to do is go to add some tabs to the toolpath. Now I've told it six, when I started off, it was 12. It had 12 there because it was looking for 12 point whatever it was. It was looking for something metric, cancel that. Okay, so we're going to go to six millimeters at the length and the thickness that I'm going to have left there is going to be one and a half millimeters. It's actually going to be 1.4 millimeters thick in the tab because I've told it to go down 16.1. I've told it to go 0.1 more. So 6.0 there. Now I'm gonna edit the tabs as to where they are. I want four tabs. I'm gonna, I want one, two, three, four on each vector. Now the tabs are there. I'm just clicking up there to say that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about any of that. I'm gonna click add tabs. Now the tabs are there because I don't want little bits of this flying around the room. I don't want the thing we cut out from here to become a missile and smack me in the head or break something. Now I'm just left clicking and dragging these tabs away from the radiuses because I need to clean these tabs off with a chisel and a bit of sandpaper. I don't want to have to be mucking around in there. I want to clean the, what's left off in an easy manner. So I'm dragging these back so that they're not going to annoy me. And the last of the four vectors will be like so. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Close. Now this is all good. I don't need to worry about any of these things. My safe Z here is five millimeters above the work surface. Now I'm going to name this toolpath because it's a 2D toolpath and it's always a good idea to give something a name because as you're going through, say I get 10 toolpaths as I start to become more advanced with what I'm doing, I'll say, right, well, where was that in the whole scheme of things, Dave? Sorry about the camera bouncing around a little bit here, but it's on top of the monitor. All right, so we're going to go back to the, to the Vectric again, to Aspire, and I'm going to give this name uh, what will we call it? Let's call it, um, I'm going to go in caps so it's easier to see, slotted holes and 6.35 EM. That's uh, 6.35, let's go MM space EM. So 6.35 millimeters end mill, which I, so I'll know what tool I've got to have in there. And then I'm going to put the date. So for me, it's the 8th of the 9th, 2018. Okay, that should be pretty good. Now I'm gonna click calculate and we'll see what it does. Now it's thrown up a warning. It says tool will cut through the material. Now it's telling me I'm gonna cut through the material by 0.1 of a millimeter, pressing okay. We'll continue and I'm gonna say okay. Thank you very much. Now it's given me some stuff here and I'm going to use solid color on here which is white and the yellow is the global fill color. Now I could go to let's say maple. Let's have a look at maple as being the timber color and that might be nicer. 
rather than white. Going back to two-dimensional, it's showing me the vectors and the toolpath on the inside of the vectors, on each of my vectors. And that's the point that it's going to start at. So it'll start on this one, do this, it will go to this one, we'll go back to the 3D view, it's showing me what's going to happen. The tool is going to start from the outside here and the machine will come over here, do this, then it will come up to here, do that, come across to there, do this one, and then down to there. And then it will probably park itself back here, out of the way. Now I can have a look at a preview. Now over here you might be wondering what this global fill color is. Well, it's showing me what might be left in the bottom of a hole. Now I'm guessing that the tabs are going to show up as yellow. It just lets me have a look at everything. Now I'm going to slow the speed down. It's going to do an animation for me. And what I could do now is I could save this preview image. So I'm going to say, we'll save it in the Aspire projects and I'll give it a name. Uh, slotted hole test dot jpg. That's fine. And I'll say save. So I've got that little picture I can send off to anyone I want to. And now I'm going to have a look. I'm going to preview this toolpath. And you watch, it will animate the thing happening, and it's really fun to watch. So I'm going to click this, and away we go. There you go. Now, the bottom, these are the tabs that it's left in there. This part would have been the missile that went flying around the room, but it's going to cut those out for me. Now I'm going to scroll on the mouse to make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to left click on the mouse, and I can roll it around and have a look at what it's like. Clicked on it again on the left button and I can drag it around and have a look at the back of the board. And again the same kind of thing. Roll it over a little bit and I can see that I've come all the way through save for those tabs. Now I might have got to there and think oh, how do I get it back to being normal so I can see it again. I'm not not really getting anything happening. Well up here see it's got Z, X and Y. It's going to show me it's, it'll give me the view. So if I click Y, it's going to turn it around sideways. I'm looking on the Y axis. And if I click X, it's going to show me the X axis. That's the end elevation. And Z is going to show me the plan again where I was at the beginning. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to close that. And it's going to say, all right, Dave, I'm going to give you a few options here. Now, one of them I like is this one. This is going to tell me how long it's going to take. If I click that, it's going to tell me it's going to take 3.37 minutes. So just after three and a half minutes to cut all those out and say, there you go, Dave, what do you want to do next? If I had some more um, tool paths here, it would combine them or it would tell me at the end how much time it would take to do those other items. This is on 100 millimeters a second. Well, I'm on less than that. I'm on 50. So I think it's going to take about seven minutes. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to save it as a toolpath. Now, I think that might do me for the moment. I'm going to start the next video right now but I'm going to release them as two different videos. The reason being, we're now starting to come from our CAD to CAM, and then we're going to go from CAM to saving it to a text file that Mac 3 down here on the machine that runs this understands. So I'll put a link to it, and you can come back and watch that straight after this if you want to or you can just watch this. I will put all of these in a playlist as well to help you out. So thanks for watching. Keep on coming back. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you find this is interesting, you want to keep in tune with what's going on, just click the subscribe button. There might be a little bell down there. Click that as well. And uh, that will let you know the next time I release a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.